Philip Grandi's visit to the biggest refugee settlement in the country came at a time when the settlement is home to more than 230,000 refugees. But also to recognize and support Uganda's leadership in uh, very new approaches on how to assist refugees. We have visited today a uh, solar-powered water project that will uh, feed with water the entire area, refugees and host community. We are here in, uh, in a women's center that, uh, where are on display some very uh, um, innovative uh, livelihoods projects. But when uh, he is able to cro cross examine uh, reports on the documents and the physical things happening on the ground. Environmental degradation from both the host communities and refugees is a major concern which Grundy believes needs attention. So, you know, all that UNHCR can do there is really, again, to be a strong advocate. UNHCR can do small projects. We can certainly help with planting trees. This is what we will be doing here. We have been doing here. I think one and a half million trees have been planted here with our support. But this is not enough. We need to really look at the long term, again, a sustainable approach. We need to bring in uh, much uh, bigger resources, and this is uh, why we're trying, you know, environment, I think, with education and livelihoods, in my opinion, is one, and health in this uh, difficult situation, are the key priorities. My appeal to all local governments, especially Yumbe, is that they should be able to come up with ordinances. What I've seen, the bush burning, it's so rampant, we need the ordinances to put this to a stop. Grandi visited some schools within the settlement, as well as some building projects aimed at improving housing conditions for OPM staff. The refugees are paid to do the work, with the earnings helping in improving their livelihood. It, it is good that I may get a scale to continue and also to help my country. Uh, we also have a layer of skilling them and we are saving a lot of resources uh, where we engage in refugees directly to be able to construct this infrastructure but also engaging them to be able to be skilled when they go back to their countries of origin they will be having these skills at hand. There have been calls to call some refugee schools as part of government schools but government is concerned about the tax burden it would create. The High Commissioner assured Uganda of continuous support. So I want to appeal to the international community to support us, to do their role, to ensure that they provide for these refugees and the hosting communities. Because as far as I know, the, the, the peace in their home countries of origin is not yet achieved. Uganda is a stable country, it's a country where people are hosted. But Uganda needs help. Help cannot, cannot only go to the crisis situation, has to go also to the positive situation to make them sustainable. So this is why we are looking beyond the humanitarian. We're looking at institutions like the World Bank. We're looking at institutions like uh, the bilateral um, organization of... Uganda is the third largest refugee host country with about 1.4 million refugees from mostly South Sudan, DRC and Burundi. Ali Mivale. NTV.